Yo, Boo Bears, what's going on? I'm Mario Ramon, and these are Conversations with Mario. Today, we're going to talk about the Queen of Soul. Um, I woke up this morning and got to my phone and saw that there were reports that she was in grave condition. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is my first time ever hearing about grave condition because I would have been made a video about grave condition. That deserves a video in itself. Like, if a heifer is still alive, don't say she's in the grave. She's in gra grave condition mean you're dead. So, like, after, after a girl dies, then she's in grave condition. I just thought that was most evil. That was evil. And these reporters are standing outside of Bethel Church. They're outside of the hospital with their little microphone and their hair is blowing in the wind. And they're like, she's in grave condition. They're trying to give it to us. And I'm like, well, honey, she's still alive. She's not in grave condition. She's transitioning. Let's say that. She's in transitioning um, condition. But that grave condition, that'll get you snatched, honey. I'd molly wipe you. I'll come right back. I have enough energy on my death bread to crawl down there and molly wipe you. And then I would just die in the middle of the street. Don't call a boy grave condition. So let's talk about the life of Aretha Franklin. She's done so much. She she was in movies like let's, with the Bellucci brothers. Like for real. She's been around since Chinese currency was invented. Like when God said, let there be light, she turned on the switch. She was singing all loud and stuff. And he was like, well, I ain't say sing loud, Aretha. I just said, let there be light. And she was like, okay, Lord. <laughs> and then she did this. You know, Aretha used to do the shoulder thing. That was her rhythm nation. When she does the shoulder thing and dip it down. When she's singing. I said, do the shoulder shimmy. Um, I, lo I love her. She's, she was another, like... In the aspect, and I, and I say was because she doesn't do interviews anymore. And that's why I say was. It's not disrespecting her because she's still here. And you'd never know. Um, but when she interviewed, because she doesn't interview, she's like Prince. They just don't do interviews. But when she interviewed, her interviews were just as entertaining as her voice or her acting. She was a great interview. Like, she just kept it all the way real. She handled it like a G. It was like she was a gang leader. Like, and one of my favorite interviews is when she was with Wendy Williams. And she told Wendy Williams, you could pick up the check. You can be stupid for men. I'm not going to be stupid for men. You be stupid. She kept saying that. She also told Wendy that she wanted, she was a little delusional. But she wanted Halle Berry to play her in the movie. I almost blacked out. Who's going to pay for my doctor bill when I hit it on the hardwood? Um, then she said... It was a couple of things she was a little delusional on. Um, and then, what else she she told she wanted? Uh, and then she said maybe Fantasia and maybe Jennifer Hudson, which I don't think she wanted Fantasia to do it. I think she wanted Jennifer Hudson to do it. And hey, Jennifer has an Oscar, doesn't she? Mm -hmm, we got things going on. So I would use that to my leverage, Jennifer, and start pitching that movie. Like write it yourself. Just write it yourself. Do a really good job. When you play young Aretha, cut your hair down, you know, and put on that baby makeup so you can look young. You already lost the weight. And then just do the different wigs and makeups and give us the different variations of Aretha. And you can do the movie, Jennifer Hudson. And you can do the voices as well in the movie. Okay. I'm talking about the singing. Um, but uh, Aretha, she will just cut you in some aspects. Like, she was... A queen isn't always nice. I mean, you can't be to that level by, okay, 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 like being Chrissy on Three's Company, honey. So, um, she wasn't always nice. Let's just keep it close to real. I remember she and Di um, Dionne Warwick in this one interview. Well, it wasn't an interview. The, there were reporters in, in, um, reporting on this, and they said that she and Dionne Warwick had a little strife. And... Um, she, Dionne Warwick was upset with Aretha Franklin because she didn't come to Whitney Houston's funeral. And she said that you were her godmother. Aretha Franklin said, I wasn't her godmother. Oh, it was too much. And I think you should have said that when Whitney was alive because Whitney Houston also said that you were her godmom. And I'm pretty sure that Elizabeth Houston did not know that you felt like that about her. Not Nippy. Nippy would not, she wouldn't have messed with you if she knew you truly felt like that. Like she really didn't need, no, your name to 
for clout. She had Clay Davis in the voice. So she said that out of love. That's all I'm saying. Okay. And then the one other time that I can think of is when Patti LaBelle tried to touch Aretha Franklin's hand when she was walking out. And Aretha, don't, don't touch me, Patricia. I don't like you and you know that. Don't think because we in film in front of these cameras, things have mysteriously changed. I don't with you. I don't with you. Okay. I don't mess with you, honey. Don't touch me again. <laughs> All right. But there have also been times when she smiled at Patti LaBelle when Patti LaBelle did the tributes to her. When, you know, when Patti LaBelle did um, Ain't No Way and all the other things. And, you know, um, I just wish that really, really talented people can get along just like Lettucey and Rochelle Farrell and George Duke and... Um, George Duke and just all the people like they all used to get together and do jam sessions how awesome would it have been if Patti LaBelle and Aretha Franklin and Gladys Knight could get together and do a jam session well Pat, uh, Patti and Gladys like they're girls but Aretha I just think that Aretha felt that she was on such a level that she doesn't have to play with bottom feeders and anybody else that's not the queen of soul is a bottom feeder anybody else and I just don't think that, because even in one of the interviews, they said, well, who's the next Aretha Franklin? She said, Aretha Franklin, honey, there would be none after me. Now, I do think that Fantasia is a cross between the Aretha and Patty. Like, her voice is definitely like Aretha, and her notes are Patty sometimes, but she'll take off her shoes and she'll perform. So that brings us back to Patty. And then with the voice, you know, she could do anything. Like Aretha Franklin can get in the recording studio with Lauren Hill and do a rose is still a doggone rose. That you could do anything. You can do Amazing Grace and a rose is still a rose. And then Ain't No Way and Dr. Feel Good and all of her library catalog is beyond extensive. Be you can put that on at a barbecue and just let it play, Aretha Franklin, yes. You can put it on and clean your house. You can put it on and wash your dishes. You can put it on and make love to your man. He could be like, oh, you feel like that about me, like Dr. Feel Good? You don't want nobody always sitting around you and I? Oh, you my girl. Like, she cursed him out. Not, she didn't curse him out, she told her family. I don't care if it's my mother, my sister, or my best friend. I don't want nobody sitting around me and my man. Not all the time. Come over here, get the tea, and hit it. Okay? Go. You up. So, I just loved it. I loved it. Um, I love when, when Mariah Carey and Aretha Franklin got together and, you know, the Diva show and... You know, Aretha Franklin, she will come out for some high-profile situations. But recently, in the last year, she'd been canceling a lot of shows. And I, I just say, you know, kudos for even getting those tour dates at this age. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, Miss Franklin's up there in age. And, and to still want to tour, and it's stressful. You guys know how it is. I don't want to go to Texas today. I'm just saying, because I have to go to the airport. I have to take my shoes off. I have to take my belt off. I have to take my wallet out. And then I have to eat $30,000 airport food and all this stuff. I love it when I get there, but it's it's work to get there. So when you're that age and you have to do that and then you have to get remember the show order, the notes, and still sing like you did 40 years ago, can you do something you used to do 40 years ago? I want to see you run around that school track the way you used to do 40 years ago. That's real. And we expect these people to be where they are 30, 40 years ago. And, or we'll say, oh, that was an okay show. The show was okay. No, bitch, I'm 80. This is all I have, honey. This is what's left, auntie. I'm 80. Be glad I showed up in a sequence gown. Oh, my goodness. It's just too much. But, you know... I don't know what the hell grave condition means, but if that does mean that she's in intensive care or I I don't know, then I, I pray for Miss Franklin and her family and, and to give them peace and their heart and their lives and to give her peace and her heart and her life. You know, um, she will always be remembered. If, 
if this world were to end today with a comet and we had a rocket and we could put music, one, one thing for the aliens or whoever to find, the next life, and we're going to shoot it in space and then it'll just hover there until somebody finds it, Aretha Franklin's music would definitely have to go in there. It would have to go in there because she transcends from gospel to pop to rock and roll. And, and Patti LaBelle does the same thing. Aretha Franklin, she does like opera. I remember the time with Bacella, or Bacelli, uh, what's his name, Bacelli? Andre, uh, is it Andre Bacelli? Oh, so Andre Bacelli at the awards, he didn't show up and Aretha Franklin had to stand in for him. And she's saying that, no, you. Bitches' wigs were on the ground, including Celine Dion. Celine Dion may have tinkled on herself a little bit. I know that Celine Dion needed a paper towel to dab in between her legs when Aretha Franklin got finished. Cause, and Celine Dion, mind, she can take any new, uh, any of the old girls. She be hitting her chest, and I can take you. But Celine Dion cannot do opera, honey. She cannot give you Kathleen Battles. She can't. Mm -mm. And and Aretha Franklin can go straight there. She can walk right in the dressing room, put her makeup on, and be. Right, baby. Miss Franklin, give it to us the way we like it. And we like it like that. All right. If you like the video, pass it on to your friends. I mean, we love Aretha. Just, uh, I don't want nobody sitting around me and my man. It just gets me every time. Every time that line will never get old. Okay, so, but we, we love her. Pass it on to your friends. And if you pass it on to your mom, put it on your social media. If you, and if you like the channel, definitely subscribe and look at some of the other videos. But just, um, I, I, I'm just so, uh, I feel some kind of way because all of our super talented people um, have gone in some way, like Luther Vandross, Michael Jackson, Prince, um, Whitney Houston, and, and so to hear all of this, Gerald Levert, um, Tina Marie, okay, please don't forget about Miss Tina Marie, um, it's just so much right now, so I just feel some kind of way, and I guess I just wanted to exert the energy and do videos so I can go on about my day and um i just i pray for her you know i don't like hearing that i just don't like hearing that that a bitch is in grave condition all right peace love you bye